Angela Swart. Freedom. That one word, freedom, goes beyond just one word. It sparks something in us. It speaks of something true, something honorable and good. Freedom. If you were to ask someone, almost anyone, what they believe is the most important thing that we as Americans cherish, or in other words, what's the value in the U.S. Constitution? Every American, an adult, a youth, a senior citizen, or even a young child would answer, and their reply would mirror freedom. Freedom cannot always be described, but it can be defined and expressed. Today, I would like to bring your attention to and explain the importance of America's founding documents, mainly the seven articles of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, which together are the Constitution of the United States. By telling you about why our Constitution was formed, what liberties and justices it allows to us, and also how we are to fulfill our duties to defend and uphold our Constitution, by addressing these topics, I would like for you to see the values in our U.S. Constitution. The United States Constitution was drafted and signed on September 17, 1787. At this time in history, we, the American people, were in a time of need. We had only recently gained our independence from Great Britain, and although the Declaration of Independence had made us free and independent states, we needed a constitution, a written law of the land. We needed a central government, not for the purpose of dictating over the people, as it was feared to do, but to unite the states as a nation. So the preamble to the Constitution states, to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. We, America, were now to have a Congress which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. This Congress was to be granted with all legislative powers, as stated in Article 1, Section 1 of the Constitution. The Constitution then continues to ordain requirements for the conduct and election of this Congress and its representatives, senators, etc. Article 1, Section 2 through 7 deal mainly with the rules of order and proceedings in the House of Representatives and in the Senate as well as the duties of the President and the Vice President in their respective roles. These rules are important because they define and regulate the order of our central government and ensure that all proceedings will be fair. This prevents the central government from dictating over the people. Article 1, Section 8 describes the powers allowed to Congress concerning taxes, international commerce, piracies, and the progress of science and useful arts, as well as other important issues such as naturalization and the duties of war. The whole of Article 2 expounds on the qualifications and expectations of the President and Vice President, and also describes the manner in which the presidential elections are to take place. Article 3 explains the workings of the judiciary system of the United States, and the conduct of the Supreme Court, and issues regarding national and international crimes and misdemeanors. Article 4 of the Constitution describes the privileges and boundaries of each citizen in regard to the state. Article 4, as well as Article 5, explain the rules necessary to admit new states into the Union, to guarantee a Republican form of government to each state, as well as protection from invasion, and to propose amendments to the Constitution. Article 6 continues to address the importance and validity of our new Constitution and other laws of the United States made in the pursuance thereof. The Constitution then states that both the judiciary system and the House and Senate are required to support and be bound by the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. Article 7 concludes with the date and signatures of the Constitutional Convention. However, the value of the U.S. Constitution is not only in its articles, but also in its Bill of Rights. These rights were imparted for the sake of the people, for the people were concerned that even now, they, the citizens of America, had not yet been fully granted their due rights and freedoms. So, the amendments to the Constitution were proposed and ratified, and became part of the Constitution with the intent of all fairness and public confidence for the benefit of the American people. And moreover, these amendments, along with the aforesaid articles, which together are the Constitution of the United States, 
are significant and relevant to our country's heritage at all periods in history up until today. Now, why is the Constitution important? What do I mean by the value of the U.S. Constitution? Let's look now from the history and content of our Constitution to its meaning and relevance among the American people today. The Constitution is still the written law of the land, which all leaders in our government, as well as all American citizens, are required to abide by. In the court system, in the law enforcement, and even in the workplace of the average citizen, the Constitution is at the base of nearly every action. If you think about it, each regulation that is ordained in the Constitution pertains to the everyday code of conduct that we as Americans live by. But sadly, our Constitution is not always respected and viewed in its entirety today. In recent years, I have heard the term unconstitutional used in a number of cases. So, too often, this term is not spoken in complete honesty and context. And unfortunately, more and more of our freedoms are being diminished or taken away. The freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the right to private property, the rights of the people to keep and bear arms, the rights and regulations of citizenship. These are all explicitly stated in the Bill of Rights, which is part of the Constitution, the basis of our government. Yet we are in many areas being denied our rights. The only way to change this, to keep and protect our freedom, is to be informed and be willing to speak up on behalf of not only our rights, but on behalf of our posterity for many generations to come. But how do we defend our freedom? Must we know what is really in our Constitution? Must we spend our time studying and learning from our historical documents? Must we know what our freedoms really are? Absolutely. Without a knowledge of our Constitution, the basis of our government, we cannot hope to prepare. We cannot hope to be prepared to defend the liberty, the everyday privileges that we enjoy in the case that they be threatened. This hope of gaining knowledge of our nation's documents should be expected through the promotion of the Constitution through the government, <coughs> in the home, in the workplace, and even in the church. And most importantly, in my opinion, in the teaching of our children in the classroom. In the public school system today, the Constitution is too often not viewed as important or valid. Therefore, our children are not being taught with respect for our true American system of government, the way it was originally intended to be. I believe that this needs to change. We need to, as American citizens, defend and uphold the Constitution and value it for the regulations and freedoms that it allots to us. I believe that God has blessed America, and He continues to do so. But I also believe that if we hope to remain the great nation that God has made us, we, the people of the United States, will take the time to read and stand by our foundational documents. Above all, the Bible, God's holy word, and also the document which has ordained our rights and freedoms as American citizens, the valuable U.S. Constitution.